Let's talk about Rocky. I love the story behind it. It's the classic underdog story, the American dream in a movie. It's fantastic, the story of Sylvester Stallone's rise. And him as a person just seems like a good guy, honestly. I don't know him personally, but from what I do know about him, he just seems like a down-to-earth, humble guy, probably because he was just a down-and-out nobody in Philadelphia with no money. He was so poor, he had to sell his dog just to survive. I mean, the man was living in a shithole in a shithole city, which in the 70s is probably much worse than it is today, but Philadelphia is still a shithole. I will stand by that. Maybe a, maybe a lot of my vindictiveness for, towards Philadelphia is because of Sixers fans. I don't, they suck. <laughs> They're evil. Nuggets for everyone. So that's why they're so fired up. And Giannis Antetokounmpo obliged a couple of days ago, and now Ben Simmons will feed them all here. Sylvester Stallone, though, is an interesting figure for this movie because of his story behind the movie. It's as much a movie about Rocky as it is about Sylvester Stallone. They're one and the same. They're basically the same person, more or less. Obviously, Sylvester Stallone wasn't working for crumbs at an underground boxing arenas in the heart of Philadelphia. He was an usher, making no money. But this rise is him. The, the movie is about him. He wrote this movie. They offered, studios offered him $300,000, which is an insane amount for the 70s, an unprecedented amount, as it said. And in this movie, out of pure luck, pure coincidence, he's chosen by Carl Weathers to fight him, which is the biggest honor a boxing man can get, fighting the world heavyweight champion. It instantly makes him a star, he'll get hundreds of thousands of dollars, and it changes his life, much like him writing this movie does for Sylvester Stallone as a person. It changed his life. So this is his movie. I also love the theme it's playing with about fame which is something I'm sure Sylvester Stallone was dealing with as the movie came out, which is Rocky's a nobody. Nobody cares, nobody likes him, nobody's training him. And then once he gets famous, everybody wants to be his friend. Everybody wants to help. Everyone wants a piece of the glory, which seems to be the thematic of the movie, knowing who your real friends are, keeping those people close. Uh, quiet, you know? I think it's close. No, I think maybe we're just early or something like that, you know? You! You! We're close! Some of the character drama I didn't find particularly interesting. I think the relationship between Adrian and Sylvester Stallone is neat and fun. But a lot of the other characters I kind of wanted more out of. I think Sylvester Stallone is good in the role, but there's a lot of people that he's associating with. He's not only boxing in these underground, very low stakes, barely earning anything, boxing matches, and there's people he meets along the way there, there's people he meets at his gym, there's people he meets playing an intimidator for the mob. So there's a lot of characters he's interacting with constantly, as well as Adrian's brother, and some of those characters I just don't find that compelling, so a lot of the scenes when they would go to those people, I was like, meh, whatever, and I'd kind of tune out, but I loved that it's Gorilla. That was one thing that shocked me. I did not expect this to be guerrilla filmmaking. <laughs> and it looks really good. I mean, they shoot a ton at night and they managed to make it look great, not only because it's shot on location, but because it's real Philadelphia. They're walking around streets at night with no permits. They're just doing it on a whim and it just is so grungy and gross. And I loved that element of it. It brings home the setting of the film and how kind of dire Sylvester Stallone's Rocky's character is. He's at a very low point. His apartment is complete shit. He talks about how it smells horrible. He's living in a dump. The streets are terrible. It 
drives home how bad of a situation he's in. But it's also juxtaposed by how optimistic he continually is. He never really talks about how bad the situations are. He's just like, yeah, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to be a cool guy. I'm going to box. You know, I'm going to make men ends meet. Adrian, yo, you're pretty hot. How did you come to co train in an ice box? Oh, uh, well, uh, my friend, the guy over there, he let me in one day and I hit the beef here and I kind of liked it. And since I've become a challenger, the owner don't mind neither that I come in. He's an incredibly endearing figure in this movie. He constantly is talking. He's always yabbering about something. And Adrian is the complete inverse of him. She's quiet. She's reclusive. She barely leaves her house. She just doesn't know how to be social. And their relationship's probably the best part of the movie because they're so opposite. I loved that element of it. The boxing, though, is almost an afterthought. It's one scene at the start with this terrible, low-stakes, horrible boxing <laughs> match where people are throwing shit at them <laughs> while they're boxing, a guy's headbutting him. It's a terrible situation, and as he's leaving, he's just like, whatever, I got paid, uh, stitch me up, doc, I'll just go home. I'm gonna walk around the shitty streets of Philadelphia, here I go. And then this boxing match at the end with Carl Weathers, which is like a 10-minute sequence. So altogether, it's 15 minutes of boxing in a two-hour movie. But that stuff didn't need to be anything crazy. The movie is about Sylvester Stallone as a character, what he does to survive, and his relationship with Yorin. The ending fight is visceral. He's They're punching each other. They're going after each other. They are exhausted. It's going round after round. Neither will give up. By modern standards, it's not super convincing. A lot of the angles aren't flattering for punches. A lot of the angles are blatantly giving away that they're holding punches or they're completely missing them. So that isn't super convincing. And when you look at other movies about boxing, specifically around this era... It's not fair to compare it to Raging Bull, but Raging Bull, eh, you know, it could be better. But I liked it. I think it's fun. And for next week's movie, though, we're going to choose it on Netflix. My camera died. So I came inside to do it. Just pick a random movie on Netflix, and you won't believe what it pulled up. This is kind of interesting timing. Titanic, a movie I have admittedly never seen. So, Titanic, it is three hours and 15 minutes next week. <laughs>